call the meeting to order. Thanks, Is there any public comment for items not on the agenda, additions or changes to the agenda? Um, who we got here on, the, on Zoom? Can everybody hear on Zoom? Can give a thumbs up if you can hear. Holly, Holly can you hear? Hello. Holly's muted and she's got her screen turned on. Yeah, okay. Hold on. Sean O'Neill. Yes. For joining us. What's that? Joining us. They need one. Okay. So we're getting started. Um, I just wanted to review with the select board that um, I attended the planning commission's public informational meeting on the changes to the town plan. And in reviewing the timeline, if folks in the audience could please not talk, that would be really helpful, thank you. It's really distracting and then it also affects Zoom. Um, the select board is going to need to hold a public hearing um, somewhere around uh, November 22nd. So we'll make it coordinate with one of our October meetings, which November 22nd is a select board meeting. And I would like to suggest that we ask the planning commission to, someone from the planning commission to join us to review the changes and so forth with the select board and anybody that shows up to our public hearing. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Um, is Sam here? Oh, the warrants are circulating. Sandra, are you on? Yes. Yes. All right. You are up. Um, let me go to the Hopefully, Katie has done such a fantastic job of putting in order. Um, treasurer's report should be here somewhere, right? Here. Wait a minute. All right, let me go back and look. I'm not seeing hey, Rich, can you can you attach? Can you go into your Zoom program, and that way you'll be on the screen too. There we go. We don't have camera ability tonight. All right, Sandra, take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, did you all have a chance to review the report? Were there any questions or is it, does anything stick out that you'd like me to talk about? And uh, specifically, we're in the first quarter of the year is not really a good indicator of where we're going to be by the end of the year, but we are um, on target for the most part in expenses and in revenues. So uh, it's promising. Tax collection is going very well. Um, all delinquent taxes from 2020 have been collected except for the one parcel we have uh, been concerned about. I have sent uh, a certified mail return receipt return receipt requested uh, bill. The taxpayer in question has not picked it up and the um, letter has come back. Now, no mail has been returned to the office as undeliverable. It includes the 2021 tax bill, um, which is not, and the first payment hasn't been made on that either. So at this point, recording in progress. So I'm not sure if I'm still on. Am I still on? Yeah. I'm still on. Um, I just there's a message on my screen. Hang on. So I think it's up to the board at this point in time. My recommendation would be that this parcel needs to be sent to the attorney for collections. It meets all of our policy um, requirements, no contact, not picking up mail, no payments, um, et cetera. Because this, is, this person is a senior and we 
just can't seem to locate anyone who knows her, you might want to make one last um, effort if the board decides to actually send someone, social services or whatever, out to see if this person is there. Otherwise, um, really, the parcel uh, for if you treat everyone the same, the parcel should go to the attorney for collections. I'm sorry to say that, but uh, at this point, there, there's no participation on the other side. I think I can find out whether that person is um, there or not. We don't want to, I don't think I want to say the name out loud right now, but I think I have a way to find that person is actually there. So I well, will. No. I'll make a note to, to, to check. Yeah, no right. mail has returned to us. Okay. So, um, so that is basically it in a nutshell. Are there any questions? If we're not gonna take action on that one right now, are we going to discuss it again at our next meeting? Yeah, well, hope, hopefully we'll have find out, find out if there is a contact that we can make and see that if this person is okay, I'll have to do it to you later. Um, so, <clears throat> moving through your report, I did have a couple of questions. Is that all right? Oh, sure. Okay, on the first page, it says, in the second paragraph, it says, we are not starting out the year over budget. Is that a, a good thing that we're not over budget or? What, what does that mean? Yes, yes, yes. Um, because the expenses are um, just a tick over the 25% mark and we're, we're at the first quarter of the year. But the, the point there is that we have a number of one-time expenses that are Reason, but budgeted such as debt payments, fire and ambulance payments, and whoop. That, hey, Sandra, that Sandra. at the beginning of the fiscal year, and therefore skew the expense picture. But the expenses are not over budget. All right. Then I had another question on page five of the report. Remind me about the social services agencies. Do they send us an invoice to, to receive the money or does that automatically get paid? Remind us how that works. Uh, most of them do not send invoices. And so for those who do not, they are paid um, in December at the conclusion of our tax collection effort. But there are a few who go to the trouble of sending us invoices and we put them on order and pay them. They're, they've been approved at town meeting. Okay, cool um, method. It would automatically get paid at the end of December. Somewhere in- tax Yes. All right, that was that question. And then I think I- I have one more. Um, I guess I didn't. Nice, well done as always. Anybody else have questions? The treasurer? No, thank you. No. Okay. Anything else, Sandra, that you'd like to share with regard to the treasurer or uh, going to the tax collector? No. We look good. Yeah, great. Uh, the I do uh, just a just a moment. The draft audit is sitting on my desk at this point in time. There were a few extraneous questions that came in over the last week. They've been answered, and I think um, I'm about ready to approve it, which means that the um, auditors will be asking to meet with the board and over the next. Uh, I guess in November. Okay. Well, let us know so we can get them on the agenda. All right. Next up is the Memorial Hall Association has asked for their 
final payout from the Conservation Commission Fund that we had, you know, we said we had paid out in two different installments. So they sent, here is the, here's their request, um, the final installment of $10,000 from the Conservation Fund. And their architect, Ryan Edwards, sent um, a letter that I'm sure you've all reviewed. So, objection, or would somebody like to make a motion? Is there to... someone here from Memorial Hall? Don't see anybody. We can't see everybody who's here. Oh, I don't see anybody. I saw his letter. I'll move the payment that we approved the pay. I'll second it. All right, is there any further discussion, comments? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none, motion carried. Very good. Um, next up, I think Jeremy is on here somewhere. Or maybe not. He, I, I asked him if he had, I just told, we made an arrangement quite some time ago, folks will remember to have the treasurer and the town clerk have time on the agenda at our last meeting of the month. So I just wanted to make sure that we followed through on that. So moving along, next up is Mr. Road Commissioner. You want to join us? What's going on? Anything? Uh, big news for today is the chipper has arrived, has arrived. So I went and picked it up. And it's in the shop. Does it look like what you hoped you would buy? Yes. Yes. Well, I see a sample before I heard it. Is it the same thing you saw? It is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much so. Yeah. Brand new. You put it to work. I have not yet. That, that's going to take a bit. I will say, yeah, there's some getting this all together, right? You don't have to put it together. Oh, yeah, it's all okay. together. Yeah, it just needs, you know, got to get used to the function and then it's sort of the oh. idling up and down and mm -hmm. not moving control mm -hmm. as far as when it idles up and when it doesn't and how fast it goes and all that. So there's a little bit of figuring out there, but new toy to play with. New toy to play with, yeah. But we will be putting it to work this fall or snow. What's our just out of curiosity, what's the what do you off the top of your head know the warranty period of um, I believe it's a year. Yeah. One year long. Full coverage yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Where do we store when we get a new piece of equipment like that? Do we have a place to store that uh, undercover or uh, it's a good question. Weather. We really don't. Uh, we really need to put up something, a pole barn or something for, because mm -hmm. we are, I mean, right now we've got one grader that sits out all winter. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's generally one in truck that's in the cold storage. It's got a roof over it, mm -hmm. but it's not warm. So we are, we are sort of outgrowing the, the dry space that we have available. Right? Mm -hmm. Is there room to extend it because we constrain that site, right? Uh, it's yeah. So you couldn't really add on to the building, but you could add another building. I think mm -hmm. you know across out across or out in the back where we store gravel. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we put up just a cold storage shed, something of that nature. Uh, yes. Another thing to think about, I don't know how far deep down this road we want to go, but well, it's not on the agenda, but no, no, but just in the conversation, uh, McCullough's might be interested in selling us a little bit of land from their piece that would add to ours, would allow us for more of the space, yeah, you know. So maybe you at some point come back to us. Well, yeah, let's. Yeah, I mean that's not thing that I'm even yeah. beginning to yeah. pursue. Right, right, sure. right now we got right now we got issues to resolve, looking at the winter and hiring. Mm -hmm. So where do we? How did do you, you did come you, out with the road contingency plan? Did you have something in writing for us? Yes, I did, and I have copies for y'all. Okay. 
uh, it's it's very preliminary, and you guys can get a little trash it. It's all over it. I also have a list of all the roads that I would propose to uh, not do in the event that we only had three people. Mm -hmm. I mean, not do it all or do it at a different time. Or do, do it at a different time. Right? But I, I don't think we can not do any of the roads. Right. But because we get state aid in the state, we don't want the state coming down on us. Yeah. But we can, we can sort of put them on a, at a later time mm -hmm. in the day, just go back around and uh, after the buses are done. I'm surprised Bain Kamoe's on it. Well, uh, I, I sort of focused on the dead end road. Okay. Anything that are that is through that goes from one road to another. I or see. From okay. a town to another town. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like we should really second them. Hang on, though. Um, we're getting ahead of you, but I want to circle back that these are not all. Dead ends. No, but you can explain. Right. You can explain. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you explain yeah. to us your plan? Well, can we just so so the current status is like status quo. If we have full staff, right? Can we want Alfred? Right. As we as what we have right now is for for drivers, for operators, for pilots. That's what that's status quo. That's what we've always had. Uh, so in the event that we only have three, Ed is sick, one of our other guys are sick, that's when we um, go with the possible situation column. You mean this? Yeah. I mean, this is not complete. Uh, no, 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 it's, it's a good start. Complete, it's but a good it's, start. it's a stab, and that's what you asked me to do. No, I, I get that. So. So we have Tyler and yeah, Bruce. Tyler, Ed, Bruce, and okay. myself. Okay. And then Ed is the, Ed is the temporary. temporary part time. Slash. Temporary. <laughs> temporary. Okay. So you're including yourself as an employee. That was kind of where I was getting stuck. Got oh, yes. I drive yep. my truck yep. too every Got day. Got it. Yeah. Yep. So I, I take one of the roads. So less important roads or holes, as you call them. So this right. the, with this list. So yeah, I'm putting aside. I, I, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. I just want to give Alfred a chance to explain before we start asking a bunch of questions. Go ahead. Uh, right. So having only three drivers, it's our rodeos are going to be more like eight hours instead of six. And that and that is based on doing the whole town, right? Mm -hmm. So minus these, that's us doing all these roads that are on the list. Oh, that if we, okay. If we don't do all those roads, then we can bring it back to six hours or mm -hmm. three guys. I mean, if you do them later, if I do them later, yes, yes. yeah. And the question will be too. It's like what, <clears throat> obviously. You know, this is something I want to address is how many hours can you see, can your crew safely drive? You know, with, right. in right. What is that service period before you've got to be rested? Okay, well, you know, it's in our road right. winter road policy, which I think we probably need to revisit, revisit. just to re refresh everybody. Right. Yeah, that would be so. Something for round two is setting out what are the assumptions. So one yeah. assumption is that we can fly. With our safety standards existing in the yeah you might want to say the winter right. Katie yeah. for the record we it's the winter roads maintenance policy and it's on our website and as it stands right now that sort of uh, it talks about time that we're out there right not right. the amount of time but the, the hours that we're right sure, from this sure. right when we you would know, start we so. start plowing at six at three and then we end at 
I think it's by nine. Right. By minimal, nine. Minimal service after after nine. Right. But in that policy, I remember it said how long we want, how long the rodeos are, and and that the crew has to take a break after so many hours. Right. Do you remember what that those numbers are, Alfred? I don't know on the top of my head. I mean, it's like I said, it's it's more more talks about from three o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock at night. And, um, and hours beyond that are less service. So but, if there's an emergency, we're going to be out there. Somebody's going to go take care of that particular road emergency. Well, but but I'm having a little trouble squaring. So I think we just need to note this. But really, I'm having trouble squaring that we are on the road possibly from 3 a.m. to 9 p.m. and we have driving safety standards that we're meeting and we don't have to, this is a rabbit hole that we could probably spend 45 minutes on. Right, that's something we need to look at in conjunction with this, but I don't think we, I think it's, that's a piece of this puzzle. Right. But let's get through this right. part tonight. And, and like you said, the, the, the winter maintenance policy is something that we can revisit and change those numbers, those times those right. later on, not tonight. I'm not looking to change it. I'm looking just to be really clear. I I am looking to how do we, what is the plan where we meet the safety standard if if we have one and uh, yeah where we meet the safety standard. We're not. I'm right. not looking to flex that. I'm looking to how do we keep everybody safe and make a plan that might mean safety means folks stay home, whatever. Keep going. Okay, hey, Katie has located the document and is going to share it. I mean, I see that I see that as part of the picture of this. Right. Um, and I, I don't think we need to go into it. I think it's worth raising now. So Alfred, in your in your second draft, you're like, okay, where do those safety standards standards fit? Is my plan as I've started sketching it out going to accommodate the safety mm -hmm. standard? Right. And if not, how do you flex the plan so that you're still accommodating the safety standard? So, so in other words, right. Alfred, well, you I need to review that's... review the roads winter roads maintenance policy and come back with how that can work with this. So, well, okay. yeah, I think that a lot of this is they're just not going to work in conjunction with each other because if okay, we only got three guys. We're not going to be able to stay within those safety perimeters some days. No, you will. You will if you make the plan that says this is what it looks like when we do that. It says after 12 hours on the job, the road crew may stop operation in order to get a minimum of six hours of rest. So part of your plan has to be, how do you make that work? Yeah, I think what you're hearing, <coughs> first of all, thank you for coming up that? with the first draft yeah, and the first draft. Thank you. The first draft, the first draft, as I understand it, simply. Yeah, okay, it's the first, I think it's great. So what I understand is that this first stab says, at least preliminarily with three people, we could, we could do our job in, within the six hours if we don't plow the, the roads on the list until later. And what I think you're hearing is great. And then in the next draft, take a look at the, at the policy and ask yourself, is this list long enough? Or are there more things we can't do if we wanted to maintain the basic safety standards? In other words, as Sharon said, don't, Assume, make an assumption that we don't flex the safety standards. Make an assumption that we live with the safety standards and ask yourself, Alfie, is what do we have to cut to do that? All right, how do, we, how do you make the safety standards work? <laughs> right. kind of plan? As I said in the very beginning, we can't just stop plowing roads. This, right. this list is some that we can put on the right. sort of back burner. Right. right? But we, we can't, can't just stop plowing. So well, if you can three guys, something has to get. Yeah. Right. If yeah. you conclude that, if you conclude that, I mean, I don't know where you'll come out. You might come out and say, well, with the, this list, 
we can meet safety standards and do this. Or you might come back to us and say, guess what? I can't make the current standards work. And here's what we're gonna have to change for a winner that is uh, bad with uh, three guys. So one, thing, one thing, one thing that Alfred didn't bring up yet, which we had a conversation with the, the school system, right? Because we've got the school kind of have to be, you know, plus. So we then we may be able to get some give and take there too. It's possible, you know, that they'll have a B plan where they reel in, if they can reel in a certain road, so people have to get their students to drop points. And that eases some of that pressure, it frees up a little bit more manpower than for those other roads. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that's that's a piece of this, because that, that's part of that road plotting part. Right. So what I think you're hearing, Alfred, this is, this is a good start. Mm -hmm. And you heard our comments and go back and look at the winter maintenance policy and the comments that were made and see how we can, how you can incorporate the safety standards into your plan. What I copy my view, just speaking for myself, is that I'd like us to maintain safety, really at a sort of basic safety at all costs and, and plow less. If you think certain places where we're really going to have to cut a few corners on that, then be clear. Just be clear and tell us. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely think that there's going to have to be more. Yeah. Cutting. I mean, based on three guys. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, when I first started this job 23 years ago, I was the fourth guy. They added me as a fourth route. Mm -hmm. Prior to that was three routes. So, so what to go backwards, to go yeah. backwards. And I'm not saying that you guys are want to do that but yeah it's it's gonna be less service you have less service yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 this, this list yeah. of roads and or more. all of them in general yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you recall how they did it is it similar to this you think uh similar to what si this similar you know. similar yeah also back then they had a truck that had two wings so you were plowing the whole road oh, right. sanding it Find sanding one time right. onto right. the next. Ah. Now um, we only have one wing, so we've got to backtrack. Okay. Right. So we can sink, we can plow one way, plow the other way, right. and then sink. Right. So that one truck was uh, doing the work that two that it takes two now for. Right. 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 Two right. two trips. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've well, lost that's, that. I think that's something we've lost that, that that's never come I back. Think the, two wings I think it would be good to put that history piece in a document to show how it used to be done and the difference now so people understand why 20 years ago oh it was a problem 20 years ago and he, but it here's why it wasn't a problem because we had double double wings right and well yeah. that list that list could go on and on i mean demand is a whole lot higher right. now than right. it was the expectation yeah. yeah i mean i'm well, sorry more people people, in town. people you know, they planned ahead, people stayed home more. Yeah. They weren't afraid of putting tire chains on their truck or they were, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, how many times do you see a vehicle with tire chains on their rig? You don't, you just don't, except unless it's a town truck or a log truck. So okay. that history is also really, I think also really useful. Um, and also good snow tires. Yeah, good snow tires. I mean, what? I think we all take a turn saying it, but you are you articulated you articulated a second ago an an assumption that we have to meet the expectations that people have, or that we have to uh, meet the service levels, if you will, that we've been doing. And I think what we're what we're giving what we're saying is what we want to be able to do is communicate to people that we may not be able to meet those service levels and change and be able to message and set expectations with safety as an absolute top priority. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that's what I'm hearing from everybody is that's the last thing we want to give up. Right. So we need to understand 
when we keep the if, we, if the if the assumption that we lock in and build around is safety of the crew meeting the standard in the town documents, which I think we've had conversation over the past year and a half, absent the crisis we're in, we might be saying it's not good enough what we have in that policy, or we haven't been doing a good enough job adhering to it. But if we set that as a framework and everything else works around, what does that look like, and how do we communicate that to the town is. And also, I what think we're we, talking about. And I think, I think it's fair to emphasize the importance of residents making sure their vehicles are safe. Right. You know, right. here's we can't tell them they have to do this, but here's what we recommend: make right. sure you have good snow tires, make sure that you allow plenty of travel time. You know, those kinds of things like that. And when we get everything all said and done, we can have a way. And I mean, not everybody has a computer or internet access, but we can, there can be a way that we can put a banner mm -hmm. on the website saying, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're in plan B for plowing right now because we don't have to say why, but because, because right. you know, and maybe it's because a truck broke down or somebody's out sick or somebody got hurt. We can put a banner on our website to alert people. So, and I've also asked VT Alert, I asked them some time ago, if there was a way that the town could have some kind of a, an email list, and it could be confidential, that when there's an, an event, that a VT Alert goes out to the town residents that sign up for it. Mm -hmm. So I haven't explored that recently, but I did ask them several times. So, about doing something like so that. and I think this is related to getting high speed fiber optic cable plumbed around this town mm -hmm. as a high priority. I know it's on our agenda. Um, would really yeah. help, would get in front of me or a larger yeah. agenda, um, would help us in alleviating some of the, the demand on Alfred and his crew mm -hmm. during uh, the storm seasons because people increasingly will, are gonna, will be able to remotely attend work. Right. And the, if we, yeah, and if we could have some way to communicate, we then could include the school system in our alert that, you know, guess what? We're going to be using plan B for the next week. I think they automatically talked to Alfred already. Yeah. So yeah. their yeah. communication is there, right? it's direct way. And I think the most important thing, the next step, I understand what you said, we know if we've got three people working and we can only have a 12 hour duration. So we've got 36 hour man hours mm -hmm. to do. The whole town. That's that great, how many, how many plants can we do as a straight system? Mm -hmm. And then we look at prioritizing importance, less important mm -hmm. if that's what we want to do. We still have to plow them like Alfred said, they've got to, we have to keep them open. The question is, can we tweak it so that my dad, that, uh, and then the last thing in there too, you want to think about is staggering, right? Like storms don't go in 12 hour cycles. So do you, do you have two guys on a regular shift and then stagger a third person so that you always have, you always, you always have a driver on the road? If something happens, so you're not right. Well, I can't. I don't know. You you did with three guys. I can't yeah. have one guy out there. I just I just can't. There's I get that. So right. many it's a safety issue. That could go wrong. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah because we've asked about that before. One okay. guy at a time. You know, we can have two guys at a time because we have radio contact. Mm -hmm. If somebody gets in trouble, the other can go. So that them. idea is out. That's good. That that. That's right. that. So, so I guess one, what I'm one truck out there is not. Okay. So I guess what I'm hearing is you did a good job on the first draft. Thank you very much. Go and we're asking, it sounds like we're here asking you to go back, draft two, look at the um, winter roads maintenance policy and see how what would how do how do you make that work in one of your plans? Because safety for the road crew is the first first priority. So do you have enough information to go back and do another draft? Yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering how that's going to change. Well, think about it. Well, yeah, think about right. it. Think about it and come back to us. Mm -hmm. Just think about it in terms yeah. of we know man hours. You know, say so you've got Eddie and you've got yourself. You know, you've got 
three. So, you know, what that would, that would call whatever those three people are. Mm -hmm. uh, how would that division split three ways work in the town? And what would that radio time look like? And then, then would, after that, someplace we can kind of, we can start playing with prioritization a bit, you know, to see, okay, right. you know, I, it's, there, there's a lot of voodoo in this because as everybody here knows, I mean, there's so much variance in every storm. Mm -hmm. You know, you some storms are really demanding time-wise, and others are. Right. Yeah, so we different. don't know. They right. come at all different times. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. and all so, different intensities. Right. Right. So, right. Okay. right. Okay, so I guess we're look at your ready screen. to move look on. Look at your screen. Um, Road crew hiring. We placed the new ad with the new information. No, I have nothing. I'm sorry to say I have nothing. Nothing. Okay. What is all of this? Oh, 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 oh. Is it you? No, that was me. That was me. I said the host would like you to unmute. I don't know why I asked me that. Yeah. Sorry, John. It was, no, it was an accident. Oh. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, we don't do Jeremy it. mentioned no, something yeah. about maybe Barbara got something or hurt somebody to get a hold of me. I just haven't. Yeah. All right, but at least we're trying, we're trying, trying to come up with a plan. I know there's a lot of this out there. Just get more. It's everywhere you go. It's everywhere you go. Right. But it, it does actually lend. It, it really makes us so important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with that. We can go one more step um, in preventing losing another one. Ed Rowell just wants uh, holidays. Yeah, he I just wants to be paid holidays. Yeah, and we check that out. I think that will make him happy, and we can. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure we can do that. So. Right. We asked the town attorney. There's something we can do. The board just needs to. Um, agree to do that. He's, I have his email. Yeah, we got, we just had it sent around. Yeah. So, he said it was doable. Yeah. Part time. So, um, would the board like to make that decision now so that this information can be on the record? That, um, what are we, what are we deciding exactly? We are deciding to pay and straight pay for holidays. Because right now, if there's Christmas Day, and he works, he gets paid. Right. If it's Christmas Day and there's no snow, he doesn't get paid. He doesn't get paid. So, so this, so yeah, so I, I just want to get this is a personnel issue. So we have to be really careful right. what we're approving. So what we are approving is a complete one off. Yes. Because of um, his status. Yeah. Because we need a part time road. Person and we are not saying anything about anybody else or any other situation. Right. 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 It, it, right. It, it's not a legal issue for an employee with pain and holidays. Right. But we're not making a policy statement. No. We're just no. making an ed statement. We're, we're doing case. this case by case, mm -hmm. employee by employee. So I would make a motion that we pay our temporary employee Ed Rattle for holidays. For now. For while he's working. While he's, work, work, while he's working as yeah, a temporary, a temporary employee for the town of Calais. And we'll revisit it next year, too. Right. Mm -hmm. yes, we, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Katie, can you make sure all of the, what, this is case by case, this is one time, all of that's happening? Non non precedent setting. Non precedent setting. That's yeah. a good. Yep. That's a good one. Okay, so would you like to tell Ed? I love showing that. And it will be effective. It's effective on upon passage, which passed immediately. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So just just uh, if I could throw a scenario out. He mostly, especially as the winter starts coming, he's going to be getting working at least forty hours. Mm -hmm. They're obligated to pay him overtime after 40. Mm -hmm. So does that work the same for a holiday? If he works 
uh, if he comes in Christmas Day with the snow clouds, he's still getting the holidays, he's still getting the same as, as everybody else. Like if, I, if I come in Christmas Day and I work, I get 10 hours or nine hours for the holiday plus the time that oh. I work. Yeah, I'm that. Right, right. He, can yeah. Take, he can take right. that day another time. No, I what else is asking for oh, okay. Oh, okay. It's time and a half, right? It would be time and a half after he's worked the court. Yeah, so I, I guess the question is, does the, the does the go towards overtime? Does it accumulate? Like it does for the rest of the crew. Yeah. So in keeping the rest, how the rest of the crew does it, is that what he's asking for? What uh, well, so no. I just need to know to tell. I think I think personally, I think he should be treated the same. He should be treated the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it should be the same. Basically, working full yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. And he's willing to not quit, not take all of the benefits that he's right. entitled to. Right, right, right. Because right. he doesn't. I agree. With you. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I think we should treat him with the holidays the same as treat him the same. Yeah. All yeah. Should we yeah. clarify? Keep no, I think that we should. Yeah, I think for the for the record, Katie, can you make sure that the minutes reflect that clarification? It would be wonderful if someone would state it in a sentence. Would you mind? Go ahead, Mark. We're going to add to the motion such that. Or we can just make a new motion. I just when is this a so just add to the motion. Yeah. It's just a statement. Such that with respect to all relevant personnel provisions regarding payment and vacation overtime. And overtime, he is paid the same as other employees. Because our other full time treated the same compensated. as other compensated. compensated the same as other employees. Other full time. Yeah. Other his overtime and holiday compensation is the this, same as the full time employees. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. That, that that's does good. it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you ready to talk about um Chapin Road? So um thank you everyone for coming out for another site visit on Chapin Road. And I'm looking, you are, oh, okay. So I know that there is, you're here for Chapin Road. And Sean O'Neill, are you here for Chapin? He was on the Zoom. I know, but that's why I'm asking. Oh, you're looking in there, sorry. <laughs> Sean, are you here for Chapin Road? You're on mute, I can't hear you. I don't think so. Sorry. Yes, I am, Denise. Okay. Um, let me see. Larry Bush is here, I'm assuming, on behalf of the Conservation Commission for Chapin Road. And um, Tom Cronin, you're here for Chapin. Danielle LeClaire. LeClaire. LeClaire, you're here for Chapin, I assume, Tom. Lashley is here for Chapin. Yes. Um, Anybody else? I don't know. Holly Clark? Yes, Holly Clark. Yes, okay, so Holly Clark. Okay, so I'm just going to make a Holly's statement. Holly's voice changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to make a statement as we're talking about Chapin Road. Um, in the past, it's been difficult because there's been so many people on Zoom. So I'm glad you're here in person. That makes it a little easier. Um, we're going to talk about this. If anyone starts yelling or using foul language, you will be removed from Zoom. So I can leave early? Yeah, go ahead. Try me. Try me, John. Try me. We're not going to have any disrespect, yelling, or foul language from anyone on Zoom or anybody in the audience, and no, especially no board members. Right. I'm no fun. What can I say? What do I come? I know. You come for the cookies. That's oh, that's right. Okay. Um, all right. So let's get started. We did a site visit and then we did another site visit on, it was October 16th at 10 in the morning, which is Saturday. And we had a good turnout the first time, we had a good turnout the second time. We um, walked the route the first time with Alfred and show, he showed us where the Conservation Commission and he had decided that a parking area might be a good place to put it. 
we did some more walking and and came up with a couple of other alternatives to um, the site, to, to a parking area. Um, on the 16th, when we were walking around, we were kind of like, well, why do we really need a parking area? So here are the options um, that we came up with when we were meeting on site on the 16th. The first one was do nothing. Second one was to install a parking area and mark the trails. Third was no parking area. And the fourth is, are there other options that the board would like to consider? So I'd like to hear from the board first. We'll go around the board first and then we'll give other folks an opportunity to talk. Does that make sense? Okay. John, you first. Get that camera on. Um, well, yeah, so folks, I'm uh, <laughs> our, our, hour. our remote camera is not working tonight. So I'm spinning a laptop around so folks can see what's going on in the room. Um, so I, I attended both site visits out on Chapin Road and um, just cutting to the, to, to the quick here, um, coming to, cutting to the chase. Uh, I, I think that there was a consensus among those who attended the second site visit that um, at least for now, it, it would be fine to get tra trails in. In fact, trails clearly mark property lines or boundaries of the town forest would be advantageous not only to the folks using the trails in the town forest but to the neighboring property owners so that folks uh, didn't stray from the town property um, so I, I think that my, my position as one member is that we should you know support getting those trails and I don't know if it's going to happen this year Tom will actually can probably fill us in better or if it's going to happen next spring uh, but I think that's something we should go forward with with regards to the parking area. I think we hold that in reserve at the very least um, and decide down the road based on level of use and any problems crop up. If we feel there's a need to revisit that, then we revisit it at that time. That would be my position. If I were to make a motion, it would be along those lines. Sure. Um, my only question is whether whether the question uh, my question is whether the question of trails or no trails is properly a select board question um and i tried to find a charter for the trails committee and mm -hmm. i actually couldn't find one and so um if it, so my preference would be of course that the question of trails or no trails I mean, we could be excited about trails and you where know. does it where did we say no trails uh well, well that's one of the listed options it's one of the options mark um the do nothing, the, the do, do nothing, oh, do nothing or nothing. um other options yeah i mean so so i think without a charter i don't know if there is a charter or a charge and it would be good to find one if there is for the trails committee to understand what their, their authority is but i would imagine that it's actually within the jurisdiction of the trails committee to decide whether the trails go in where they go in all that stuff on town property Probably. so so our scope of authority having delegated that to the trails committee is to say yay excited about trails good you know would be great to go for walks that's my, my that's all i'm saying is I, I wouldn't want us to see us take a vote on trails or no trails. Mm -hmm. I think the question for us right now is parking lot or no parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, That's what I was sort of getting the, at with my list. No, but. I know, I know, but I just I don't want us to unwittingly like create some expectation that's our decision about trails okay. unless, unless we're sure that it is. And I and I'd, I'd like to revisit that because I think I'm in disagreement. I think ultimately this is town property and we're we're in charge of what happens on town property. There's even liability issues. And but while we delegate, it's like the planning commission, it's advisory. Um, and uh, unless there's a statutorily prescribed authority like the cemetery commission or something are separately elected, then I think everything falls is mm -hmm. up to us. But have um, we but there's but have we is that is that clear because it's my understanding that perhaps there are trails on other town property or the assumption that there will be trails and that question hasn't come before us so i don't know, think that that's going to be an issue that we're going to worry about tonight it would be good to find out and get clear and get clear 
Right. But I think tonight, if we're talking about, I think we're mainly talking about how we're going to put in a parking area. Mark's next. Um, on the trails, <clears throat> absent clarity, if there, unless there's some clear delegation, I think it's up to the select board to say, mark trails. What it's not up to us to do is to say where, how many, what they should look like. That's the trails committee. That would be the delegation. To me, that would make sense. That's the way they've always done it. No. That doesn't mean it's... Right. Um, but as to the parking lot, I guess I only attended the first. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Could you guys tell me what well, happened that caused that? Because in the first, we were not too enthusiastic after a while with one location, mm -hmm. but we found a second that we kind of liked. Did you look and at that's where it was? So what was your did you look at the draft minutes that I did? No. Because that talks about that. Could you just quickly summarize that's I, I don't um, need a I lot. Remember, just a little. I think it was the the some of the points that the neighbors made that currently it's used very little. Right. So the parking is not an issue. And we, we talked about the road and the fact that you know it's gonna have me it there may be increased traffic, the road is narrow, which to me, that didn't sell me on that because there's a lot of roads in Calais that are narrow and have a lot of traffic, probably more so than Chapin does. Um, so I think the fact that people were concerned um, with the added extra coming, that there wasn't an issue with parking now on the usage. So why would there be an issue going forward if it's not advertised or nothing changes in the scope of how we prove, how we publicize or not this particular trail, which we don't with any other trails. The only one that is really used a lot is, and I'm gonna forget the name of that place, the conservation, conservancy one, Chickering. Chickering, Chickering well, that's not ours. That's not ours, that belongs right, to property. the Nature Conservancy. That one does tend to get a lot of use and a lot of publicity and events are scheduled. We don't foresee that with the Chapin Town Forest. So I think the fact that it's really, there's really no need for parking here. And in other words, people feel that there's enough parking on the side of the road, like where we park right. and for three can, or four cars, right. if that's what's going to sell that no, much. Right, there's really no <clears> need <throat> for additional parking. I, yeah, I, but I wanted I I want to be able to respond to Mark's question because I would respond differently to to the question of what changed. I wasn't at the first one. You were at the second. I was at the second one. Um, if if we were if we had a vote of parking lot or no parking lot tonight, I would vote parking lot. Um, for me, the difference the difference is we don't have to vote. We're losing nothing. We could put a parking lot in next year. We could put a parking lot in in two years. There's time to see whether any of the, whether they're, they're to phase it. To, there's, there's time to phase it. I mean, and based on, I mean, based on if the trails commit the same trails, whether the usage increases. Right. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Or also, I mean, we do have to be aware that there is some concern that we that there that that folks accessing the trails would block the class four road and it's yeah, a town right. road and people do use it for access to you know parcels beyond that that could be that could be an issue but i'm willing i'm willing to wait and see i think that's what we talked about is that mm -hmm. let's yeah. see how it goes right. well what i'm thing. not saying is like, what i'm not saying is i like, is i I don't agree with everything Denise said. That's not necessarily, and I'm not going to say out loud what I don't agree with. It doesn't matter. It right. doesn't matter. Right. The consensus is it, I, again. If I were voting tonight, I would vote put in a parking lot. But we don't have to do that. We're losing nothing by by reserving. Well, I think what we we talked about too is seeing how it goes. Right. You know, is there going to be a lot of usage? If there's a lot of usage and it creates problem on the road that people can't get down up and down the road. Then that's a problem that we'll we have to need to right, then, then we need to address it then, and that would maybe lead us to believe we needed a parking area. But if nothing much changes and the current usage doesn't go up, then there's really no need for a parking area. 
And that, my apologies on that. It, and I understand where Sharon's coming from. I mean, kind of, kind of split a little bit myself, but I actually like think it's wise to do the trails, wait and watch. But it's just in the act of building that road, just that gravel road, even if we do that really short, right? You are going to, you know, we're, we're going to have more maintenance issues in there, I think, unless in, in the drainage we got impacted a little bit. So I think we're, it's prudent. You know, if there's a lot, if there's a big increase in vehicles down there, we're going to see more damage to the class four. And then we're going to have to, then we put in parking. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to see, I think, I think you're going to see so few people using it that it's just not going to be worth that. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll do more damage than good. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Alfred thinks, but I'm, I, mean, I think you can see what I'm driving at probably. I mean, we yeah. have to gravel that to wherever we park. Or, mm -hmm. and then we don't have properly. We have to do something with the water, which we can do. But every time you drive vehicles, if there's, you know, I mean, we're changing that natural. Well, the, that, that's another point is that there are two right possible parking places three 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 okay then what that means is to some extent people will park there and so one of the other one of the other impact risks whatever that we're taking is that is not just road dam dam damage but just habitation yeah, habitat and, damage. yeah habitat and you know, well, that there's, there will be, all three will become part of the spots. Well, Mike, uh, yeah, what I want to say in that too, I wasn't done, was with that they, there's also the confusion of where to park. And we've got that, a private road starting right there. And we, we just talked about, right. you know, we have to make sure that's signed properly because we don't want them right. parking and blocking. I mean, that is narrow enough that it's going to get difficult to get by for somebody. Right. If somebody isn't careful about parking, they could block it. Well, and then I think so, that's where we're going to hear from. Right. Then we'll be hearing from the neighbors. You know, there's all these cars parked alongside the road. Let's rethink. Let's, re let's, 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 let's revisit the, lot. the parking lot yeah. option. That's but smart. I think for tonight, we could vote to not take any, not say we're never going to put in a parking area, Please. but say that we're not going to put in any parking area at this time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That's perfect. That's right. well, and, that that's we, and that we love the idea of trails. The, who's on? Wait a minute. I think John wanted yeah, to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to well, say. yeah. So I think maybe I disagree with Disagree with I, I hit this button sometimes moving this thing around. I, I do struggle. And I think I'm probably the odd man out here with our, quite frankly, for a 40 acre or 38 acre parcel, 34 acre parcel, us invading a neighborhood and bringing, potentially bringing that of a high level attention to a 34 acre wood lot. I mean, it could go either. I think actually nothing's going to happen. I mean, I don't think anyone, like I've said to everyone here, I think to exactly. some of the are and the drive across town so they can hike a 34 acre woodlot when there's thousands of acres all around us. I mean, we're that spoiled in cows. Our neighbors, there's tens of thousands of acres. So you're going to get in your car and drive over here where there's a 34 acre. There's not a waterfall, there's not a view, there's not a special rare plant. And if there is, we wouldn't tell you. <laughs> um, you know, there's nothing going on there. Um, to my mind, and I've said this to Stephanie Cowan, the conservation committee. Um, so I, I don't see it as being beneficial. I, I, I just don't see the benefits outweighing the negatives for the neighborhood. I, I really struggle with it. And I, I, you know, I try to think if that were in my backyard, if I was enjoying what's essentially a dead end neighborhood, the benefits of that. And now we're going to encourage everyone to come. To a town. To a, it's a town pro, it's it's a town property that was originally all these town lots were meant for firewood so that we could keep people mm -hmm. heated so they didn't freeze to death in 1934. It wasn't meant to be, and now we found other uses, and that's great, but I think we continue, we need to be sensitive, that's all. Um, and I'm sensitive to their concerns. So I think, but what after saying all that, I think what we're doing is showing sensitivity to those concerns. Yeah. I, I think if folks 
We'll see, we'll see what happens. I, I think not having, I think bringing attention to it and not having trails marked is a problem. I think bringing attention to it and not having boundaries marked is a problem. Um, because now that's where we're, gonna, where we're gonna have the conflicts with neighboring property owners who have made it clear that they don't want people, you know, walking about their properties that are that have been posted. Yeah, and they have um, they have already a struggling with, with people doing sure. that. Sure. Yeah, but that's not just to be clear. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is Paul's been out there to survey so that the boundaries are clear. Right. That's so, why we're doing. So this. if so, you're saying yeah. I just want to make sure that Art. everybody who are watching this understands. You're saying if we were doing, but that's not what we're doing. What we are doing is making sure that the boundaries are clear. We've had a survey to to make sure clear mark and. And the intent is that the trails committee will mark trails on the town property that will be easy to find so that people are not on right. the neighbor's property. Right, and that's what I, I, well, and I, that. and I, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. right. I tend to agree with John on this about the neighbors and being sensitive to their concerns. But at the same time, I don't want us to say we're never going to put in a parking area. Right. I think we need to, I think you, I don't think, I don't think we publicize this town forest trails any more than we do any other ones okay i think we have consensus yeah yeah but i'd like to i guess i'd like to hear from tom and then larry representing the conservation commission and then if a, a neighbor or two well, anyone who showed up would like to, to speak you know then we'd like to hear from you tom are you there i'm here where are you i'm trying to find you i'm here He's on the list. Tom, oh, there you are. Can, can you see me? Yeah. Yep, gotcha. Okay. Well, um, thank you for um, the, you know, on behalf of the Trails Committee, just thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to, to investigate the Chapin Town Forest. I've been out there a few times, kind of scouting around. Um, I think it's actually a very interesting piece of property for um, people to walk through. Um, it's not my decision, but I, I kind of got an idea as to where a trail might be located. Um, but I'm, I'm very interested to hear from the entire committee. And so we are scheduling a walk of the forest on um, this coming uh, Sunday on Halloween. <laughs> and uh, we'll report back to the, the select board on the results of that walk at um, a meeting in the future, and I guess we'll just take it from there. I have walked um, the boundaries of it with Paul Hannon, a surveyor, and I have a pretty solid idea of where the boundaries of the town forest are located. So um, I don't think we're going to have problems with that. And, um, you know, I don't foresee like a whole spider web, you know, circuitry of trails through there. It's just too small a parcel. It's not like the Bliss Pond Town Forest, which is much larger. And, uh, and parts of it are really not traversable. They're too wet or they're too gnarly or whatever. So, um, so we'll report back when, we, when, we, uh, when we've done that walk. All right, very good. All right. Um... I just want to remind folks it's a little after eight, so we want to move this along, but I want to give everybody an ample opportunity to speak quickly. Larry Bush, do you have anything to say? Uh, yeah, I, I hope just a couple of quick comments. Um, partly in response to Sharon's uh, question about, you know, how this management of these uh, town forests work. Um, this is, this will sound a little bit like, like turf protection, but but it is the responsibility of the Conservation Commission as things now stand, at least as I understand it, uh, to in the first instance, be responsible for managing the forest, which would include decisions about putting trails in there and so forth. Uh, obviously we can only make recommendations to the select board ultimately, but, but the responsibility ha uh, has lain with the uh, Conservation Commission um, for a long time at least, um, to, to be in charge of the things in the uh, town forest. And that includes the trail system that's on Bliss Pond Forest. And, um, and I would think probably also the one in Chapin Forest. Now, having said that, the, the trails committee has become a very important central 
uh, actor in the creation of trails on both public and private land in Calais, and we're grateful for them doing it and look forward to working with them. But I did just want to, uh, I felt, since I'm the only one here from the Conservation Commission, somebody should probably try to point that out. Very good. Is that it? Thank you, Larry. Thank yep. you, Larry. Okay, I'm going to go around um, Zoom first. Tom Cronin has had his hand up. Uh, yes, thank you. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, just want to keep the conversation moving, so if you can make it short and sweet. Sure. Yeah, uh, thanks very much for the opportunity to speak, and I appreciate you uh, yeah, taking our input. Uh, seriously, there's two uh, questions that come to my mind. Uh, one question is, there's a 600-foot stretch of road from the mailboxes to the beginning of the private road that is maintained by the subdivision. And I just want to understand from the select board, or if you've had an opportunity to talk this over with the town attorney, if there's any sort of liability to the homeowners of folks using that stretch of road. I don't see how it would be any different than it already than it's everything already is. It's still, still, a class four. It's still a class four road. It's still status quo. Nothing. We're not doing anything to change anything. Okay. Yeah. Because I, when I look back to the agreements that were signed uh, when that subdivision was put into place. Uh, you know, I understand that there's an agreement between the homeowners in the town that we privately maintain that stretch of road. So I, I just want to understand from the select committee if someone's car was to be damaged because the road wasn't maintained sufficiently, would that liability fall to the homeowners? No, I don't see how it's it could. Road. It's a town it's road. road even if it's a class four road, road, it's a town road. Okay, even though we, we pay to maintain it. Right. Okay, and then uh, so we, as in the the homeowners and the subdivision back there, we privately maintain that six hundred foot stretch of town road, right, and that's what's in your deeds. So, so right. hang on. So, I'm sorry, Tom. I'm Tom. Do you are you also on the trails committee? Yes. Okay. So, so I'm processing Tom's question from trails committee. Wrong. Tom is also a homeowner up in Chapin. Right. Okay. All right. Okay, I just had to orient where you were coming from. Your question. Yeah, thank you for making that clarification, sure. And then, yeah, my second question is, uh, I understand this is a class four road that connects down to Peck and Brook Road. And if there's any chance that if a trail was to be established, that that would then allow for, you know, other all-terrain vehicles to access that road or is something going to be done to prevent all-terrain vehicles from being able to get from Peck and Road to Chapin Road? Pekin. Um, I mean, ATVs are not allowed on any of our roads or trails. I don't know how they would get across that ravine. I walked that road end to end and kind of back. I got lost. I mean, if it becomes, there's a ravine, you can't get through. There's an ATV. Understandably, but I, mean, I, I know that if a trail gets put in, they may try to bridge that ravine. Um, so well, they can't my, without town. They can't. It's a town forest. So town if something, road. something like that happens, then you come and you tell us. Okay. And we haven't had an issue on any other, any other trail. No, we have trails in our land. We've never had an ATV. No, nope. so it's not normally. I, no, I, but this is this is a private. He's speaking about the far end of this class four road. Right. That meets Pekin Brook Road, and that is washed out. There's a culvert and a steep ravine, and uh, and, and it's muddy as heck. But um, it, well, that's a good reason. If someone else. were to want to spend you know twenty thousand dollars in renovating that to put a culvert and make it uh navigable by a vehicle um they would first have to get permission from us to open that up and do to perform that work so right. that would be illegal otherwise right and we would have to <clears throat> have a meeting a hearing and notice and that's right. That. right that's right yeah okay. okay well thank you very much for allowing me to to ask those questions and for providing a response i appreciate that Oh, Sean? Um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll just make a quick comment um, that I, I really appreciated um, the meeting that we had at the um, proposed parking lots on the 16th. And um, I did feel like uh, that you all were listening to, to the residents out there and our concerns, and I really appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate John's comments particularly. And um, thank you for all the work that you do. 
Thank you, Sean. Um, Margaret Thomas, is she a neighbor? Mark, Maggie. Maggie? Yes. No. Yeah. Thompson. Yes. Do you want to make a comment? Um, uh, I don't, I don't think so, but thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Danielle. Danielle, did you want to make a comment at all? I guess not. Okay, um, Holly Clark. Yeah, I think we, uh, we just strongly uh, agree as neighbors um, to really what John's saying, you know, um, really being sensitive to what, to what we think um, really, yeah, I think we all could kind of agree to that. Okay, thank you. Um, Kai? Uh, I'm going to thank you succinctly, and again, I appreciate you all coming out for the second site visit. So. Yeah, I think the second site visit was really helpful. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. thanks. I'm no further comment. All right, thank so, you. So, um, I want to see if anybody, anybody else, I mean, anybody's welcome to make a comment about this. So we don't, so going back to Larry's point, I can't remember, um, we don't have a motion to do a parking lot, so we don't really have to vote not to do a parking lot. Do we, do we have a formal, I can't remember, has the, has the conservation committee commission Larry, or was it Larry? And Tom. And Tom. Tom, and Tom is the trails. Um, trails is Tom Blatchley. Who was doing, but Larry was the one who spoke on behalf of the Conservation Commission as having responsibility for town. So my question is whether uh, Larry has the, is there anything from the Conservation Commission around trails in Chapin Forest for that's come to us for us to take action or should we leave it where we are right now and let the Conservation Commission come back if they need to get something from us on trails. Well, I think we've made it pretty clear. I don't know that we need a motion, but the original request to put in the parking lot came from the Conservation Commission. So I think we just need to get the message back to the Conservation Commission and that can be in our minutes that we're not gonna take any action at this time regarding a parking lot, period. Right. right. Does that make sense? Okay. Right. I think what we're, Saying to saying, am I right? Is number one, we are not going to approve a parking lot at this time. Number two, we would like the Conservation Commission, should they have a the Conservation Commission and the Trails Committee, do we want them to, if if they have make decisions or discuss this and come to some conclusions, do we want them to come to us? Well, they would come to us if they were asking us again to consider putting in a parking area. No, but if there was just trails. Well, well if trails, they'll, they'll figure out what they need from us to do trails. Okay, right. well then I'm happy just doing nothing. Yep. Okay, no motion. Yep. I no think motion. we just- put it in the minutes, as I stated. Right. We're not, we're not gonna take any action at this time regarding a parking area. Right, well, at I, th this I think time. we would, maybe we didn't, I didn't make it. I think we, we wanna make sure this, the property boundaries are clearly demarcated. Yeah. I know mm -hmm. Paul, Oh, thanks, Paul Hannon, by the way. Once again, he volunteered mm -hmm. to do the surveying right. for the town oh, really? pro bono. Wow. Well, yeah. He does this. He does this, he does this a lot for us. So so very thank you, Paul. That's good. Um, and yeah. he's, but I, I think Paul, if I read his email correctly, he it's pretty clear where the lines should be. And uh, he said he'd be willing to blaze them yeah. at some point in the future, not right off. And um, and then we could paint the blazes next spring or something. So right. mm -hmm. we should take them up on that offer, a generous offer yes. and, and get those boundaries marked at the same time or near in time to when the trails are put in. Yeah. Does the Conservation Commission need something from us on that, Larry? I think, I would imagine not. I would imagine not because Tom's Paul's email with his offer, Larry was on that. So he can Conservation Commission, correct? As long as they don't, need, as, I, as long as there's something we need to do on it, if there is, since we're talking about it, we could just do it. Tom, do you need anything, Larry, do you need anything from us? 
Um, I don't think so. I, I think it's been our assumption, and I'm probably Tom Blatchley's in the trails committees as well, that uh, we could go forward on um, laying out uh, a trails uh, system in there. And my trail system, I don't mean to suggest anything extensive. Um, and uh, probably wouldn't need to come back to you for authorization on the specific location or terms of the trail unless you wanted us to. No, I don't think so. Or blazing the property and having Paul. I mean, if Paul's doing Paul, it, he's doing it for free. He's doing, so, it, yeah. he's doing it out of his own goodwill to help us out, which we very much appreciate. Mm -hmm. And he said he would mark the boundaries and blaze. So, so I think we're going to leave this to the Conservation Committee. Yes, Absolutely. Conservation Committee and the Trail okay. Committee. And we're going to just see if there's problems All right. on the road. Yeah. Let us know. Thank you, guys. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thanks. All right. Okay, um, now we're, we were ahead of schedule, now we're behind. That happens all the time. Um, now I have to figure out how to get back. That's why right. that was a good piece of work done. You can just minimize that quick on. Okay, now we're going to talk about East Cowes Stormwater Project. <clears throat> I'm not sure which one of these documents Is, is Grace here? Grace, she are you is, on? Sorry. I'm here. And do you want to tell me, do you want this document? So, so tonight I just wanted to, Pam passed some information on to me before she left us sadly about next steps for the project. And I just wanted to provide that info as a update, if that works. Not have action item tonight. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think this was, Rick, was this just an update? It's an update. Yeah, it's an update. Informational. Where to go next? Yeah. All right. So the final design plans are done. Um, and DEC is going to be putting out a request for proposals maybe November, December for implementation phase of the, pro of the two stormwater projects. Um, and CVRPC is going to be submitting a proposal for project management for that RFP in response to that RFP. Um, let's see, the, that's my main update that I think next steps are just waiting on that proposal. And then, you know, I anticipate I will probably be leading that and I'll coordinate with the select board as needed. Okay, so that's, that's it. That's just the update then. So, yep. yeah, so approval. There's nothing. There's nothing for no us action. to do. No, there's no We're action for us to take. Right. It's just an update. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Do we still, do we still have um, Rick? Are you still delegated to that project? Yeah. 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 We just okay. yeah, don't have any action. We're waiting for the. Grant. Okay. Yeah. We just asked to have it on so we can get an update. Um. All right. We talked about. Um, we got this information about this regional emergency management committee. Right. And Grace, um, you want to do you want to get into that a little bit or or not? Sure. Yeah. So uh, the state is forming regional and regional emergency management committees (REMCs), and it's going to include so each REMC is going to include two representatives from each municipality in the region. So for Central Vermont, that's twenty three municipalities, two reps each. Um, the first representative for each town is automatically the EMD. The second representative is intended to be a member of the emergency uh, medical services community, the EMS community, to kind of offer that additional perspective. Um, so, Denise, I know we had some back and forth about the second yeah, representative. Uh, right, and she, and actually, Betty is Betty Copeland is here yeah. tonight. I did speak with her, and she was willing to serve, but it sounds like now um, that's not an option. It has to be somebody in this emergency. I'm, yeah, I'm waiting on confirmation from VEM. I reached out to them today, hoping to get some information for the meeting. Um, but it seems like, yes, it seems like their intention is to have a specific member from fire, rescue, ambulance as that second representative. They're really, that's what they're pushing for. Yeah, okay, so I don't think there's anything, there's no, I was hoping we were going to be able to 
vote to appoint Betty, but it sounds like we need more information. Well, and really well so now there's a deadline on this. If too. Betty wanted to be a liaison to the fire department, like establish a relationship, like mm -hmm. become a, a member, maybe there's a liaison role and then she could be. Yeah, I mean, some, I think something like that would work. I understand that, you know, there's not a lot of capacity for people to join another, yet another committee. Um, I mean, and, I, I, if East Montpelier is, is part of this municipality group, so I imagine that they may have someone from the fire department representing East Montpelier. Well, and don't forget, we also have Woodbury Fire Department. Woodbury. Yeah, so, yeah, so East, Montpelier, East Montpelier didn't pick someone from the fire department for their second rep, they picked their constable. Okay, so so who are even the list of possibles? Does it have to, it has to be a town resident, yep. right? Or yeah, or somebody as part of some emergency management aspect of thing. That's why somebody from the fire department is okay because East Montpelier Callis Fire Department and then we have Woodbury Fire Department. But there is a Tell deadline, me. but there is a, just wait a second. There is a deadline of what is it, November 9th, to make this appointment? So the, the list of possibles, though, within Callis. So we have, so Nick is first because he's mm -hmm. our emergency management director. But it can't be anybody else who's involved in our emergency management, but not in our emergency services, Grace. Is that what I'm hearing? How about Toby? Really? Well, right. So beyond Toby, though, like we, Toby, who, who else in Callis actually serves on? Well, I, so I, wonder, I, don't, I don't know the answer to this, but I wondered if there's anybody on the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department that is a callous resident that we could right. ask. Right. And I haven't had a chance. Uh, there are. Yeah, well, that's yeah, what I, I think we should do. table this and yeah. bring it back. Well, well, there's a deadline. Well, we what's, won't the, make the what's, deadline. The, what's the deadline, Grace? The deadline is the first, but VEM has said that they you know, can offer some flexibility. I, I don't think there's going to be any repercussions if you don't appoint tonight. You know, I can well, tell I can tell VEM that there's just ongoing discussions. I mean, we don't have a lot of people. Is really right. what it comes down to. So, we're, we're, right. we're, yeah, we're trying to that's different. I think that's a different. Thing. We're she trying. To, no, I don't think so. Be, I, she'd be in a fire. We're trying to come at it the other right. way. John's yeah. coming at it the other way. Rather than okay, who's already involved? Can we? Is Betty willing to be our liaison? To be involved enough in emergency services that. She's starting here and connecting into yeah. emergency services I, rather than the opposite. I think what I heard Grace say is she needs to check that out. Correct? Yes. So I, I think we can do Are that tonight. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So, 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 we, so we know that she's willing. So we need Grace to go back okay. and check with VEM <clears throat> as to whether or not that's an option. Okay. And if it is, then we could do this appointment at our next meeting. But for tonight, there's no appointment. To so the, just to be clear, the idea would be we would appoint the mm -hmm. liaison to one or both of our fire departments of service, right. Woodbury and East Montpelier. And so by virtue of that appointment, their role would be emergency services related. Right. Can I, can I make a suggestion? Um, forgiveness, not permission. We have Betty here. She's willing. Do it. We could appoint her and let Grace tell us no, that won't work. Okay. Yeah, so that yeah that's true. That's true. That's a motion. That's I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, second, I'll second it. Mark, that is a motion. It. Sharon Lynch <laughs> said forgiveness, not permission. Yeah, okay. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Unanimous. All right, Betty. Yeah. Yeah. Zero. Congratulations. Congratulations. You don't know what to be congratulated for, but congratulations. No, we may have to polish the chrome bells on each truck <laughs> once a year. Stand in the middle of the road with a can. <laughs> right. All right. Next up. Um, passive. Check the box. We have Kelly. How do you say your last name? It's no tech. First case is silent. No tech. Okay. From Vermont League of Cities and Towns. And she's here to help us with our insurance woes with the town. <laughs> well, the chair. As everybody knows. Anybody wants the same time? You are not the first. Is it Chaka? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Mark, 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 Sharon, that's how it started. Thank you, Mark, and Denise. 
Okay. Now you can pass them. <laughs> What's that? Okay. Can we can we stay on track here? Okay. We have a number of folks in the in the galley, I guess, or gallery as you might call it, that are here to listen about the insurance and potentially ask questions. So you kind of got the gist of our problem. Mm -hmm. So we are looking for clarification. I did read the MO, the um, document. Yeah, I've read that as you well. Sent. You don't have to. Yes, yeah, so you don't have to go over that. Yeah, I, 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 sent you my you I sent you my questions. Sure. I just want to call the document up. Yeah. Right there. Um, and we had this actually this exact same conversation with Kevin recently. Very, very similar. And I've had the same similar that? questions from a few other members this summer. I think it was in the hard with Gazette. I think I read that. So that's why we actually came up with this this year because, <laughs> because it's, it's a growing issue. It is. It really is. There's many questions about it. Right. And times are changing for sure. And, um, so have you ever had a situation? I, I imagine municipal buildings all around the state are being used by local community members for all sorts of events historically. Mm -hmm. Have you had one of those events uh, create an uh, insurance issue that you then didn't cover? I, I haven't been with Passive that long, so I don't know personally if any. Um, we certainly had a fair share of claims and there's often a lot of ambiguity to the claims as to who is responsible, who is not. Um, so contracts are really important, of course, because contracts will help lay out who might be responsible. Um, and I know your, your primary question here is about probably when should additional coverage be required or be requested. Uh, so that is really the key question that we've had come up. So it's really, you might have municipal functions and if it's hosted, operated, organized by the town, then that's really not an issue. It's pretty straightforward for the most part. Uh, yes, when it does start to fall under um, either nonprofits or small groups, whoever it might be, or we've even had some come up where some places are being used for say a wedding reception. And that's right. probably the most extreme we can come up with for an right. example. Well, we had a request recently to have a kid's birthday party here, mm -hmm. but it might make sense to kind of talk through the document you sent. I did send you my questions. I don't you know did. if anybody else did. Yep. Um, we go through. Okay. I mean, I do want to preface this just by saying that the passive, we don't have any heavy requirements. We don't say you have to do this. What we do is we just give you some management type guidance and say, you know, if you want to try to mitigate risk or share risk in whoever's organizing something, these are our suggestions. Uh, so don't ever take it as us saying you absolutely have to do this or that. Um, you know, we're just here for multiple questions. And I won't be able to answer all of them tonight. I can guarantee you that because we get these well, questions. Well, I, I think what's important to us, bottom line, is whether or not a uh, an injury or an event would be covered by passive. Just so you know, mm -hmm. we're a little bit PTSD. We got nailed about 2013, 2014. Was it that long ago? We, we do not have a municipal fire company. Mm -hmm. We have East Montpelier Fire Department and we have Woodbury Fire Departments, both providing coverage to us. They're both private nonprofits and we have contractual relationships. We fund, to the, for example, and a share of a million dollar fire station and all the costs for all the equipment and everything else. And there was a decision made by the fire chief, the crane, it was a crane rollover right, right there, right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone from uh, ANR's uh, emergency response has a spill response team came and said, well, I'm really concerned about the leaking diesel fuel out of the tank of this crane that rolled over in the wetland. And so the fire chief's like, whoa, what do I do? And they're like, well, it'd be good if you get that out of there. Well, how do you get a crane out that weighs so much mm -hmm. with another crane that's yet larger? And long and short of it, there was a $120,000 bill that was slapped on us. And Passive said, nope, we're not paying that. Not, not they weren't authorized by the town to make that decision. Mm -hmm. And so we took it on the chin. It cost us bundles. And um, Mm -hmm. we, anyway. and a lot of, so, yeah, a lot so of I, it would, it, I, I do worry about passive. I know it's a non, you know, it's, it's all of us together pooling our money. It's a pooled effort, but I worry that there's, there might be such a concern to protect that fund that they'll look for reasons to not cover us. That, that's my worry right now. So I'd really would like to know where the bright lines are, where there is coverage, where there isn't. Mm -hmm. 
that's going to be my best answer those questions. I can't answer every, yeah, any, every yeah. scenario, of course, because <laughs> what I, I came away from your memo hearing was that the bright line is not municipal function versus non municipal function. That, the, that in fact, we can have this room or the upstairs room used for non-municipal functions. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, what's up to us is to estimate the risk. And right. if the risk is somewhat high or higher, we should insist that the entity that is using it have their own insurance card. Correct. Well, and that's what it says in here. Yes, right? That's, that's, what, it says that's, that's, that's what I think. And I, and I keep coming back, and you probably saw part of my key questions are, who decides? How do you make that determination that it's a more risky event mm -hmm. than this other event? And that's kind of what this is designed to do is to help you look at some of the types of exposures that you might face. Right. Again, I can't put every single possible exposure in this document, but that's why we're here to ask more questions. If you have something specific come up, don't be afraid to ask us again mm -hmm. to say, hey, this is what we've got coming down right. next week. But we want, you know, we want to be able to open the upstairs mm -hmm. of the building up. For people to use we've had i can't even tell you how many requests we have <coughs> denied <coughs> and we don't like to deny them but we don't know what the insurance piece is so we need to find an answer to this insurance question mm -hmm. so so we, we understand <coughs> about mitigating risk that's what we all want to do mm -hmm. but at the end of the day there's risk and is is covered risk Knowing what risk is covered and what is not, those bright lines are important to informing us on how to take next steps. And so this is a, a town property, so automatically the, the general liability does apply to this property, to the premises. Uh, so typically- The entire premises. Yes. Anything owned by the town, the general liability automatically extends. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's, you know, there's coverage conditions, so it depends on what happened, um, if there's other contracts in place. Um, if there's negligence on the town's part or someone else's part, uh, things that could sway that, of course. But generally speaking, yes, the, the general liability would apply by the town's coverage. So that's why we just say typically it's the select board's decision to figure out some parameters around what you're going to permit without any additional coverage and what you think is higher risk, mm -hmm. higher exposure, where you feel it's a little too much for the town to take on because it's more likely something might happen whether that be general liability or property. And I'll go back to the, the extreme of like a, a wedding reception. You know, you've got possibly candles, you've got alcohol, you've got people dancing. There's, there's a lot of exposures there. Uh -huh. So that's where you think probably, yeah, that's something you definitely want to have somebody get their own one day policy or something. And, and that's something that, and that was part of my question. Is that like really easy to do? Can yep. people, and I know caterers generally have Insurance that covers them if they're serving alcohol. They should. They absolutely should. So we can ask for. So we can ask for a copy <laughs> yes. of that insurance policy to make sure that that piece is covered. Correct. And then we can ask the wedding planner or whoever to make sure that they get a policy for this one day event and file it with the town. Correct. Or even the bride and groom, whoever, mm -hmm. anybody can get that. So there's a couple ways that they can go about that. Um, if they have their own agent and they want to approach them for something like that. We also, for our website, we have the TULA program, which is a tenant use policy. It's pretty simple. I mean, you might have questions if you go through it, but you can access that pretty easily and have them access it because it's going to ask very specific questions about how long is it, who's attending, how many people, are there police, you know, policing mm -hmm. the, the event. Um, so there, there's things like that. Will there be alcohol? Um, and and then it'll give you a quote at the very end of it, and they can find it right there, and then we will get proof that that was bound and will automatically know that that toilet policy was bound. So there's that, that policy is right. That's, that's not a passive policy. No, it's something that we just have on our website, but we don't write that policy. Somebody else, it, it, but it's it accesses some, another insurance company and they write it and bind it right Correct. there. For that particular event. Yeah. yeah. And it's got a whole big long list. We have it saved in our database mm -hmm. too, but many, many different types of events that are listed right. in the shop. I mean, for instance, you know, we have people that like might want to do a poetry reading. That's probably pretty wow. benign. Yes, I would agree. Um, but on the other hand, if you're doing a play and there's <coughs> a lot of people, you know, moving around on stages and stuff, somebody falls off the stage, you know, that could be a problem. Correct. Well, again, I keep circling back to this. If there's a play going on here and it's by the, the local theater club, mm -hmm. Passive would not cover that if there was 
the claim be, correct? Uh, they, they might possibly, depends on what the claim is. Um, if there's, again... But we could ask them to do this too. Yeah. So it would be, yes. be good to know. Uh, actually, wait a this minute. Is, I, this is where I struggled. Yeah, with well, passing. I didn't. What yeah. I heard you say is, if it's here, the default is, it's covered. It's most likely going to fall to passive coverage. Yeah. If there's no other coverage, it... If there's well, no other coverage, I didn't get the that. default is, it's covered. Correct. This building is a municipal building. Right. Anything that happens here is covered by passive. Right. If what well, passive says, wait, I hope so. that's the rule. <laughs> the exceptions are, if the town itself was negligent in allowing an event to occur, passive might assert that it doesn't have to pay. But, but right? I want to hear this in but, writing. I, I mean, it's just right. conversational, but we thought we were covered for that crane. Right. I mean, they are clearly, if the house burns down, it's because the fire department didn't show up in time. Is, the passi is there you a know? passive policy? Oh, yes. Yes, we have a fairly lengthy coverage. Maybe now. we better. We better look at that. Well, look well at I can send you that. And, 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 no, and no matter, no. What, what I what I've been hearing is most likely. <laughs> and there's no guarantee because again, every every claim right. situation and, is and right. Yeah, I mean, you're very clear that there's no guarantee. And right. That's, right. And that's the problem. Right. I'm, I'm hearing. I'm hearing the I'm I'm hearing the disclaimer, I'm, I'm hearing the disclaimer <laughs> language, yeah. and and so that's that's and I understand that's actually that is just the way that it is. But when you consider that it actually isn't going to be the select board making decision about the play or I mean and that'll all be investigated but when right? I say when I say that I'm saying I'm saying as a member of the select board there's absolutely no way that I want us one at a time two at a time assessing so no matter what what we hear from passive it has to be translated to a town policy that we can that somebody well, with the friends As group, the friends group, and but it's still not, it's not even the friends group, it's like somebody has to make that decision, make the decision based on really clear criteria because nobody's gonna want that hot potato. Well, that's so, so why, why are we, but why, well, why, we have a pretty simple, uh, you know, at least a temporary option, and that is until we get this sorted out. It, so we people can use it. Why don't we say you need to have you pick up a? It sounds pretty simple. They're having We're trouble finding day. insurance. That's the problem. Well, well can we it do sounds like this tulip. Tulip, yeah. Oh, I mean, that's what I was. Well, gonna, <clears> that's. <throat> a, I can send you the link to that on my website. Well, if, if that's an option. If we adopt, I agree with Sharon. Where we're going to end. First of all, it's clear. We can read the policy. It's like any insurance policy. Right. You never know. Good There's luck. not clarity. Good right. Period. Luck reading that. It's not going to happen. Well, no, we do. Well, we, yes, well we no. If, if this building burns down tomorrow, we know we're covered because it says that. Right. But right. they'll, but not if it's you who lit the fire and they'll uh, assert well, it's your fault. Well, but, then that's our. Yeah. Thing. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, what I was going to say is if we adopt a policy here and we mm -hmm. list sort of the threshold when we want which activities, which kinds of activities are not going to require it, supplemental insurance and which are, before we give it to somebody here to do it, can we give it to you? Mm -hmm. Will you guys, passive, tell us whether you think it's a good question? Well, what I was gonna, what I was gonna ask is, you had this issue with Cabot. <clears throat> do you have a draft <laughs> template policy? That you're recommending to town? Not a policy. We came up with actually this instead, just as well, yeah, as much know. guidance as possible because we can't really tell the town what to do. Like, yeah, I know. Know what you yeah. Know, so. But do you know? Okay, so then my other question is do you know of a town that has a policy based on this risk assessment stuff? I haven't seen a policy yet. I've seen um, like short one page contracts or you know, agreements. <coughs> um, so they're deciding whether or not how long is it. <coughs> Events going to be, what's mm -hmm. going to be involved, how many people. It might ask similar questions like that. I've seen a couple mm -hmm. agreements of that nature. 
Um, I haven't seen a policy yet because again, this is seems to be a hot topic this year for some reason. It's well because it's COVID, everybody's trying to do some. Right. It's really coming out, right? Well, so we're I trying think, to develop. More I think that yeah. we should we should read the contract. Mm -hmm. We should we should read the policy. Great. Number one, I'll do read that. Read the insurance policy. I'll read the insurance okay. policy. Number two, I think that we should somebody here should just put together a list of here are the kinds of activities that don't need insurance. Here are the ones that do, and we send it to them for their well, I, I think the friends group, yeah, you did, it would fall within the parameters of the friends group to put together this list. Great, and they, we give them this. Yeah. We the give them this assessment. and ask them to put it together. Right, and I know bring that it they, back want, they really want to get this place used, as do we. Yeah. But we need to be responsible about how we do it. And I think, you know, they understand that, that we're looking, ladies, they understand that, you know, we have to really look out for the town. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And it's all about, as we said, it's it's all member owned, member based. Mm -hmm. So yes, we're all trying to look out for each other at the end of the day. And as I said, in most cases, there should be coverage. I, I, I don't want to guarantee because that would be frivolous. Of them. Right, right. <laughs> right. Uh, that would be stepping on claims toes. Um, but our our goal, from what I have seen, is to try to cover whatever we possibly can. We don't want to leave the town hanging high and dry. I'd have to investigate what that last claim was because uh, I'm curious and I don't uh, know yeah. why that was denied. Yeah, but well, it, it was, was a nuance. It, it was, yeah, it was it was not it was not good. Mm -hmm. But I see Cliff Emmons is here. He's president of the Friends Group. Mm -hmm. Cliff is what we're talking about. Something the Friends can put together. The list. The list. The list. Cliff. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, she So, so, so well, well, oh, he's at the top. He's talking no, he's not. Cliff, we cannot hear you. Computer issues. I'm here. I can respond to that, Denise. Thank you, Cliff. Um, thanks for uh, inviting me to address it. Yes. Um, so the friends are in the process of uh, securing insurance. We are zeroing in on uh, a couple of uh, policy proposals that we've received. And we anticipate being able to secure insurance. Um, probably not this month, but uh, next month, first part of next month. Um, a lot of the questions that are being asked here, are questions that we've already asked, uh, it's it's pretty clear uh, based upon conversations we had with Passive that anything organized or staged by the friends or um, initiated through the friends, managed by the friends, would not be covered under the existing town policy. That's because the friends are a private um, nonprofit organization. And technically, we're not really affiliated with the town. Even if we have a management agreement with you, uh, we are not the town. So uh -huh. any of those activities would not be covered by the passive policy. This is why the friends need to have an insurance policy. And uh -huh. when we get to the point where we sit down with the uh, select board to discuss the management agreement, you will see that there is language in there that uh, hits upon these points of when will we require insurance for third party if they're serving alcohol? Um, what's the rules if it's a hosted alcohol event versus a no host alcohol event and uh, catering, uh, use of different parts of the building. We've looked long and hard at all of this. It's one of the reasons it's taken us so long to develop and flush out this policy. So hopefully um, that answers the questions. I can expand upon that if anyone has some follow-up questions. I do. Oh, go ahead. So, so to to connect what we heard a few minutes ago and what Cliff just said, let me make sure I understand. So, if we had an employee of the town doing the filtering and approving and taking applications and requests for advance, Did or we? if the select board were handling the every request, scheduling. then then some that would be something that passive more broadly might cover cliff and this may not be something that it's kelly right it is kelly, kelly yes. sorry i kept I, not using your name but that was a <laughs> so kelly thank you yeah so so but cliff what you guys learn what the friends learn is because 
you know, I think it's kind of ironic because we're a small town and we have this great arrangement with the volunteer group to kind of manage, manage as a delegate where we you know we're trying to do it right with an agreement and everything but even that is too attenuated for passive coverage is that what i'm understanding does that make sense to you yeah, yeah. and i and will elaborate because this is where a lot of confusion does come around so i know we first said that if the friends were organizing and hosting events that there would be no coverage of passive that's not 100 percent true say a fire was started during you know um, an event that's hosted by the friends you would most likely have property coverage that would repair this building um general liability gets a little murky uh because passive insurance correct um so where he is correct is that yes the friends should have their own policy it's great that they're looking into that because if they're hosting the event and something happens say somebody trips and falls somebody gets in a fight you know there's so many opportunities for general liability issues. Um, if something happens there, the friends could be sued potentially. When you say passive, hosting. Yep, so they're organizing, hosting. The town, no. this is just the town's building, but the friends are- No, it's really something different though. I mean, maybe that's what you mean, but the friends, so the birthday party. So if we had everything in place that we wanna have in place, um, Denise wouldn't even know that there'd been a birthday party request. It right. would have gone to the friends committee. Friends right. would have said birthday party, how many kids, is there going to be a donkey? Yes, no. Um, and so they're organizing. Right. They're, 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 they're the, they're the, one, they're the ones that are approving the usage requests. They're approving usage requests. They, mm -hmm. They're not organizing in the sense of <laughs> sitting around as a function group and saying, let's have a birthday party. The right. Yeah, they would... Yeah. The whole idea was to have it so that the friends manage the use of this space upstairs for right. non-municipal events. Mm -hmm. Right. So that so hosting would be so let's just we, hosting to me means that the parents they're there. Well, the parents are hosting the birthday right. party, but the friends are not there hosting. In person. Right. They're not hosting it. They're they renting. Are. There's a rental agreement. To, for somebody to fill out to request to use the space upstairs. Mm -hmm. And it would be managed through the friends group to do this. That's on the, behalf of the town. Right. You know, but it's still a town <clears throat> building. Correct. So there's a lot of layers there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and a lot of different possible scenarios. Yes, the parents are, I guess, are hosting their, this, all their kids. So, um, if it's a big party, a lot going on, then that's possibly a case where the parents should have a policy if there's if it's pretty mm -hmm. big. If it's five kids and it's you know going no, no donkey, hour, there's no donkey, no donkey, <laughs> no donkeys. Um, then maybe it's everybody feels comfortable that it's pretty mundane. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's it's larger, you got you know 40, 50 kids running around every event, bouncy house, those are bigger. Um, so there is certainly some liability on the parents' mm -hmm. part because they've organized it, they they posted it. Um, the friends have potentially some liability there if something happens because they're very aware of it. They know um, everything going on, how many people they've permitted the use. Um, you could, if a, lot, if a claim got big enough, it could potentially go to all layers. We've seen something like sure. that happen. That's what this is. It's a layered situation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it's very small, it might just go to the okay. first layer. But So it sounds like what we're at is that the friends group is close to securing a policy. Once that happens and we have this management agreement in place, then we're good to go to start mm -hmm. renting the upstairs. Yeah. And it yeah, isn't great. right. I think that's, that's true. Short I, th sweet. Mm -hmm. I think it's true. I'd like to look at the policy. Would you send us the policy? Yep. I'd like to look at it. I think this is a situation which is with layered insurance. Mm -hmm. And the more the better. So if it lets us in. Of course, mm -hmm. passive wants them to have insurance. Why not? Right. It's one more well, pocket. We yeah. wouldn't actually defend the friends in the, in the suit because they're not our right. member. Right. So unfortunately, they could be left high and dry. So we just wouldn't want yeah. to see somebody I left. Think, I think should. we can cover them. Right. And they're sounds like they're very well aware of that. And they're working on it. And they'll get back to us when they have the policy in place. We can work on this management agreement and get the doors open. Right. right. So even though we are contracting and they're doing work on behalf of the of the town, we basically we can't we can't contract or delegate 
that she's not she's not saying that she's mm -hmm. saying that she doesn't really know for sure it depends on the situation so why not have another layer of insurance right, right. and every contract right. is different yeah right. and they have yeah. a contract that's very one-sided we've seen those some it's contracts so, are very so even. Uh, some say, hey, you're responsible for everything. All right. So if you were Burlington, they will set because they just hire somebody yeah. to do it. Okay. No I want to look at the, can we, I'm, uh, I'm right. conscious that we have people right. here. Right, right. We got to keep things <laughs> So, But I think that I would like to see the policy. I'll report back to you guys on sort of what, what okay. I see in it. Yep. And we'll wait until we hear from Cliff and the, when they have insurance, right? right. Yeah, okay. Right. Make sure I wasn't missing any of your key questions. You yeah, so I think question about volunteers. Well, I think that's all. That's a little different. Well, I think that's all benign right now, okay. based on this discussion. Okay. Just want to make sure I wasn't missing yeah. any. No, thank you. you thank you for coming. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. You're very welcome. welcome. Thank you. So feel free to welcome in. Feel free to stop by Callis anytime. Okay, um, let's move on to. Curtis Pond, Dan, are you okay? Katie, yes. Uh, yeah, I want the record to reflect that at this point. Katie, are you there? Yep, I'm listening. The, the, the record has to reflect that I'm accusing myself of on matters related to the Curtis Pond Dam. I own property on Curtis Pond. Whether I have a legal conflict doesn't matter. Appearance is such that it's not proper. So I am recusing myself. I will now move to the audience. Yes. And I will answer questions, but other more erudite individuals will make presentations. Okay. So I know Jim is, Jim is here. So let's um, move right along. Okay. Um, uh, no, where are you? I'm just going to do a real quick minute. Wait. Okay, ladies. Oh, oh, oh. Ladies. Rene, Kelly, if it's really hard to finish moving along on the meeting when people are having sidebars. I'm sorry. I don't want to be miserable about it, but you can either go, you can go in the kitchen or over there by the elevator. All right, let's get started. Um, Colleen, are you? Yeah, I was going to just do the brief introduction. Uh, grab a chair. You have a, grab a chair. chair where I am. No, grab a chair. And I wasn't here for evening. A mask is optional or what? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so I wanted to. We like hard copies. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I like hard copies. We're uh, we're an old town. We're a very old pond. I think I think you have to be over sixty five with the property on the pond. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the beginning of our brief history, you heard it all before. I'm not, I wasn't going to read it if you don't need me to. You know, we started a while ago. We've done a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I do want credit for that. Um, endless meetings. So our ask is we sent out the MOU. I know that Denise read it. Yep. <laughs> we could I have commented on it. Um, uh, the uh, Mark drafted that. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, thank you guys for coming to the meeting at Marge's house. Oh, yeah. uh, we have here uh, Mark Sweeney, which you all know. Uh, she's a major mover in the shape. Uh, Betty's part of the CPA now. <laughs> she got the email. And Rini Degoose is, uh, she is, uh, she's a recent addition to our uh, yeah, from our board secretary. Very lucky to have from her. East Botillier. Our token East Chalice. East Chalice. East Chalice. East Chalice. East Chalice. I meant to say that. East, East Chalice. She She's our token. She might resign. She She's our token East Chalice person. So we do have diversity here. Yeah, that's great. Um, and uh, so our ask is that you look at the MOU. Uh, it's our only way forward uh, to get the town involved. And we feel like, uh, as Mark always describes it, there's so many catch 22s and there's so many chicken and egg scenarios that it's like a real estate deal. When the closing happens, all this stuff happens. And I think you know, only a lawyer could sort of prod that up. Um, so that's our ask. Uh, I guess we talk about the MOU and what your lawyer said. And then we want to go, briefly go on to our next steps because we're sort of already doing the, the ones that don't cost anything. We've had a great conversation with Lay's office. We've had a great conversation with um, FEMA and uh, Central Vermont uh, 
the for the um, doc. What are those new things coming? Oh yeah, that's for everyone. Um, what's that? Uh, all those fundings that are coming ARPA. down. Yeah, ARPA, ARPA money that comes from Central Vermont planning. So we're doing due diligence on all those. Uh, so that's pretty much it. And I uh, think we should open up to questions. Um, so I know Jim, our town attorney is here and he's reviewed the document. And he's online. So, yeah, he's on, <laughs> he's on Zoom. You would, you, if he was here, you'd know it. Okay. <laughs> right, Jim? Right, Denise. Okay. <laughs> so I asked Katie to put the document in the folder that Jim, Jim commented on. Um, looking at it from what happened to the document? Katie, where's the document? That's it, isn't it? That's it, right? Is that the, okay? That's it. Yes. Okay. It has Jim's um, edits in there. So, um, Mark, sit down and be quiet. All right, so let's move along. Um, did everybody on the board have a chance to read the document? I sent questions I to. The I saw it. I had one. Um, I guess I'm, I'm curious about one thing, and I have one specific request. Um, I will start with my specific request being in the place that it asserts, I'm not looking at it right now, I don't think it's just, uh, yeah, at the very top of what we can see, the town would lose substantial assessed value which absence and absent an immediate reduction would require, yeah. Where are you? Um, oh, I see right here. Yeah. You're right there. Um, this would result in reduction in value of those properties, conservatively estimated, but possibly much greater. Um, anyway, so it would be, I think that came out of the modeling you did, but, I, but it's an assertion without an authority. Right. So it would be great to have some actual facts, you know, in the MOU. I mean, in the MOU. Yeah, or at least put noted, maybe you know, because that's a big, that's a bold statement. Yes. Um, that it would cost us, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I know they do. They do have that information, so we could do it as an attachment. The large yeah, well, I have that, but uh, and well, I did. Large I did um, run the information. From no, I know. I'm a colleague. No, um, for, for, uh, I think what Sharon Sharon's asking, I think that we have something with this document to to prove that assertion right. that the property values would be diminished. Right, and it's, they, and I mean, they have that document it's easy enough to attach it. We saw it. We, you guys showed. You did some modeling here. Um, I mean, often we say things here that we know, but this is bigger than us here in this this group. And and I remember seeing it. But are you looking? I'm. I'm are you looking for the spreadsheets that we did to do that? What should we provide? It's that? not really me so much <laughs> as as a as a. Like maybe there's an attachment that's an exhibit. But do you need that? I guess my question is, is do you need that for an MOU that doesn't obligate us to anything? And I guess I just I'd want yes, it doesn't need to be in it, but a but a you know a reference point, a footnote that says, you know, see <coughs> this model presented to the select board on this date, which demonstrates, you know, something that backs up because that is that is kind of the you know the um that's the case, right? That's the business case. And so having it really strongly stated as a and, and we and we would need that when we go to the voters. Right. But that doesn't mean that it's part of the MO it needs to be part of the MOU, right? Yeah. right? I, I, I mean we need it, we yeah, would need it for they would, whether it a footnote saying that. This document exists is one thing. No, it's fine. Something that references it so that anybody reading the MOU can say, oh, where is that? That, that? that kind of jumped out at me. And then the other, the other 
thing is, I maybe I missed something, but it feels like we flipped from the um, from the town from Denise and John being appointed as just kind of well, I'm not to diminish your role, but you know that the town has an has an interest and we're willing to have a liaison, you know, as a presence, but this feels like it's flipping it back to be absolutely the town more in the lead or or in the lead. Some of the language was the town will, the town will, the town will. And right, but it is the town. It's will, but it's soft in terms of what we're, we're obligating ourselves to. You know, if, say more, say more about that because I'm still I don't mean, know what you mean. Well, I kind of grew up, I wasn't on the board when you guys looked at this before, mm -hmm. but what I've, you know, heard over and over and over from kind of the legacy conversation is that the, the, the dam doesn't belong to the town. Right, right. The and and so, so, you know, I think this, this MOU hopes to get us further down the road in getting to that point. The, the idea is that we're going to work in good faith with the dam group, the, the dam group and, and the property owners supporting the dam rebuild or replacement or whatever. Um, it doesn't obligate the town to fund it. That's going to be a bond vote. It's going to be a vote of the people, probably two votes, right? Whether we do it and then whether we bond. Um, there, there's still a, a, a what they call the final engineering design plan. I think they said that Mark helped made 60, yeah, 60 grand. Ballpark, sure but you know something in that, and so the town is not saying we're going to pay that at, through this MOU, but right. we'll work toward collectively trying to figure out how to get that paid. Um, I, I do want a, a, an agreement somewhat with Sharon and just to point out what was raised in our meeting. Uh, Denise and I did meet with a, a small cadre of the dam mm -hmm. group. Um, the assertion that the decreased assessment would result <laughs> in the rest of the town bearing uh, a commensurate increase. It's not necessarily accurate because, and I don't know what the number is, and we talked about this. Um, I had to change it because of your- Okay, so that is that, that adjustment considered yeah, in, in other words, That's what 25%. What it used to be is four times as much. Oh, okay, 20, that's what 25% was. Yeah, so then I cut it back. Okay, to, okay. You know, so. so this is a little bit of fuzzy math because as we all know, we have statewide uh, education tax formulary and um, a lion's share of our property taxes, 75% to where Mark got that number, I guess, 25, 75% goes to fund our schools pretty much every year. And um, of that 75%, a large portion goes to the state education fund, which then gets reallocated, which comes back at us, but according to their formula, and it depends <coughs> every year based on student numbers and all sorts of factors. And uh, so if we were a gold town like Stowe, they have high property values, million dollar properties, that money goes into the fund. They, if their property suddenly collapsed to that of, you know, Walcott, um, they wouldn't then have to pick up that difference between a million and a $200,000 property. It would no longer be a liability. So it's, it's a very complicated thing to come up with a number and say, definitely, we're going to have to pick that up. On the highway end, that's true. You have to reallocate because that's a 25% budget piece. But anyway, so I just wanted to make that part. And where, so what I, one of my takeaways when we were looking at the modeling that at March, or March, <coughs> yeah, March. Um, is that, that the group was actually thinking through, um, I don't think we, done this ever in Calus before, but thinking through what would it look like if the property owners picked that up disproportionately, you know, assessment, assessment district, uh, an assessment district. And, and there's nothing, I'm not sure when that would come, when that sort of piece would kind of hit the stride of the project. I'm gathering it's premature, but I want to make sure that we don't lose that concept. No, that's definitely part of what I read in here. Okay. It was part of an assessment district. Okay. I mean, this sure. MOU in my mind doesn't commit us to really anything. It's just kind of a MOU laying out processes. 
that we're going to move forward because this thing's been languishing. Yeah, right. It's the good. idea is the recognition has been languishing. Right, it's been on the and and it's, it's and we all need to what? 2004. 2004, yeah. and that we're going to revive it, and, we, and the interest has been revived, and the select board is interested as well. And that's great. Right. And we finally have working. a group that is willing to step up, and not just leave it to the select board to take care of recognizing the problems associated with the cost of something like this. And that's where before we talked about an assessment district and everybody was like, no way, we're not doing that. But this new group is a little more open to, well, if we ever want to get this done, maybe we have to think about that. So um, I didn't know, if, uh, Rick, if you have any comments, Jim's here if he wants to weigh in as our town attorney. I mean, my comments are there. I, again, I, I'm concerned in fairness to the customer. I like the idea of a consultant district. You know, it's a largely, it's a private dam. It's a largely private property. You know, and I know there's impact on the town. And I know this is a really valuable asset into the, to the town and the people. But I also am conscious of you know, who has access to it, the majority. You know, I, so I think that needs to be made. As so we do have a town beach and there is a- We do, I know. And we do benefit to some degree from the fishing I agree, out. I agree. And the, and I'm the not the saying the you have no side, yeah, no, but I just right. want to make sure that it's not a, a lot or subsidizing a few. This I don't know if you that's, that's where I, I like the idea. Of okay, so you were assessment. here when they were talking about that and there was like a yeah. four, I four or five different- Ways that the assessment district. Yeah, go. good look. And I'm good with that. that? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really good. That's yeah. No, that's, I think, uh, I one of my comments, <clears throat> one of my comments was on um in the event. You found some Well that too. And about the dam being rebuilt. Oh. Um, which I thought that was an excellent one. Very uncertain that the state would permit the construction of a replacement dam. That's what right, right. You are, I right? think that's what we had found out. Before. I think basically, this my understanding is on the books right now. No, no dam permits are being uh, approved. Period. New, new, new dam permits. Right. In actuality, there's always gray. Right. I mean, you but know, it's never way, black well, and white. I'm not clear. You mean right now, the state does not damn new river. If the dam breaks, they will That's not right. break, but, make but but they like, want maintenance. Right, so, yeah. This is a maintenance. So right. well, and one of the things but, like, but and then if it breaks, then it's not a maintenance right, thing. Right. It is a that's right. total which they on uh, legally right now they're saying no. Right. And that's wetlands wants it as a wetland, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, that's why but, I made a comment in the MOU that we need to be clear. That if it for to fail, the state isn't going to let us rebuild it. And I think that's a, I mean, I think it's a good point. I'll speak for myself. But Mark, well, you know, the state water. will tell you, because I've had many conversations with them over the years, that the, the recent precedent, meaning the last 20 years, has been not to allow dams that fail to be yeah. reinstalled. Uh, but they are still reviewed case by case. And, yes. that, and that's what and they would say. Would in the end. And so would, chances are yeah. they'd say no. Right. But, um, they, they still would say it's case by case. Or it could potentially delay it for a yeah, few years. Yeah, right. That's right. And then we have a more. Or it might be more for, expensive. Well, and more expensive, all yeah. those things. And that's where in this paragraph it starts out in the event of and getting to the point about the assessment district, the town would lose substantial assessed value, which absent an immediate reduction in the town budget would require a compensatory increase. And taxes for all properties. And I think here is where we could put in parentheses assessment district to make it clear that that is something we're going to look at. Kern's Pond Assessment District. Something. No, something, whatever it's called. Yeah. But, anyways, I'm back to my original question is do we want Jim to weigh in or? Absolutely. Questions? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Take it away, Jim. Well, I'll just comment very briefly to say that I think that Mark did an excellent job putting this together. I really don't have any comments beyond what I provided to you in writing. Um, to the extent I'm here discussion about pointing out assessment district financing for this, 
my thought would be maybe to add the term proposed uh, in paragraph six, where it says proposed assessment financing to just insert the word district after assessment. Beyond that, I really don't have any additional comments for you, Denise. Okay, now, oh, a assessment district, that's where you're talking about on mm -hmm. six. Yes. Okay. Um, I, just like I, had, I had a couple, yeah, I, I kind of pointed out a couple of typos which you guys I'm sure will take care of. One of the things that in the paragraph, should the dam collapse, let's not forget that there's been a swim program at the pond for decades, I don't, years, I I don't know how long, it's been a long I've had time. 80 plus year old people mm -hmm. say, I learned to swim there and the learned to swim program. program. And you always yeah. took your salt because of all the leeches. That's what they always add on. <laughs> and now we have no leeches because of I think the thing about that. So if we're gonna list all, whatever if we're gonna list all the things that would be effective and yes. put in that because some people yes. will say, Oh yeah, the Curtis swimming area. Oh no. The island, the swim area, the fishing game. I mean, we're the number one bass pond of the state. We right. have, we hold we, yeah. hurt, we hold the current and the current record. And are we the one of the only swimming programs left? Well, I'm talking about now fishing. Oh, but, fishing. Yeah, I'm on fishing now. Uh, the mm -hmm. bass, uh, I mean, we get people from all over the place for bass, but it, it's really known as the best. Wow. wow. And Isn't you should nice? see our parade of boats on Saturdays and Sunday mornings. I bet. It, it's amazing. Uh, but, anyways, so I always like to, and yeah. uh, to point that out as well as the swim, because yeah. yeah, it's a big fishing yeah. access thing. Hmm. They just put a, a, a new big, uh, and we know that the fishing uh, has big pier. What do you call that? They just put. A, they just did a big the deal. They just did a renovation of the fishing access. Oh wow! The ramp. The ramp. It's a, it, well, that's not a ramp. It's it's a it's a big it's a uh, dock huh. that, that a bigger boat could come down and over people or whatever that aren't as natural uh, can easily step on. Like, uh, uh, yeah, no, it's a big deal. I guess. Yeah. So. Can we go down to the? I want Mark wanted to say so, something. Yep, Mark. Uh, you might just, uh, just to, following what you guys were saying, some language change. You might put in in the paragraph. That's the second paragraph. So said, "Load launch by the state of Vermont will become possible," and then put comma um, and the long-standing swim, swim uh, Dallas swim program. Yeah, I'm assuming you guys are going to make these changes that we're talking about. The long-standing Dallas swim program would cease to exist. Mm -hmm. Um, so can I ask a question? Are you worshiping Mark? Are you literally? Yeah, okay. Um, and one of my questions was on this agreement thing on number two. It says the damn exploratory group will assist. I thought we were saying that it's the Curtis Pond Association. So we're what is it? Yeah, and we were pretty much said let's not differentiate. Well, I right? think we should just keep it consistent. Yeah, that, yeah. that sounds we good. We tried to switch it over, Denise, and I think that one was missed. Oh, okay. Initially, we did the group, but then we switched it to the current uh, yeah. No, that's yeah, a good, that's same, a good point. We'll thing just keep the CPA. Okay, and then same thing in number three. It talks about the dam exploratory group. But we do say the CPA through the dam. Yeah, okay. Because we didn't want to not put in the dam exploratory group so people would say, well, what happened to that? Right, right, right. 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 They sizzled. So right, that was, those were so my we, questions and then a couple of typos. Um, when we say the town will explore and then the Curtis Pond Association will assist, um, uh, is as a practical matter, is the effort going to continue largely the way that it has, or is there going to be a real appreciative flipping of the rules? In other words, no, no, we no. see it as it continuing to be on. Okay, so you guys, yeah. so you guys are take very it happy to continue. Yeah, that. and that's and that's what they okay. told us at our meeting. Okay, and we that's... just we hit dead ends again and again and again. Is this a private group or is this the town? This is the town. This is forward. This is making it so that they can move forward. Move forward on all these attempts. Grants. Right. Okay. Okay. Name it. okay, that's fine. Yeah. And yeah. one thing what I think we kind of need some clarification is to know when do you guys want us? How often do you want us to report back half of 
We can work with the liaison. Yeah, 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 you work with John and I for your liaisons. Yeah. We don't want to overstep our bounds. Right, right. But we want you guys to know what we're doing. Right, but I, I think that balance. But I mean, I think you guys know enough about the history, what we're looking at now, and you've been good at communicating. So I'm putting it, you know, kind of on you guys to let us know when you need to talk with us. And we're very happy to do that. And we wanted to convey our sense of urgency. Yeah. I mean, we think this big weather event is, you just had to listen to the news August and September. It's around the corner. I yeah. don't think it's hypothetical anymore. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, so we wanted to say, we don't want to get this through by 2027. It's so are we, to do it are we gonna um, mark the, the, cat, the Pond Association is gonna take the lead and, and making the edits, and then next meeting we'll formally approve and sign. Well, one option for you, is that the one option is for you to approve the MOU with the suggested changes to move that tonight. Then what we'll do is we'll make the secretarial changes and bring it back to you. And we can first. just sign it next right. time. And, and we can just sign, sign, and sign we it can just, next week. Right. We can just, you do all that kind of. And, 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 and then we said. can just approve it. And I know nothing is takes five minutes, but hopefully five minutes to approve the MOU and sign it. Well, well that's that or approve the MOU now with the understanding that you won't sign it until uh, we give you back the corrected. Well, we could approve it with the changes. I think, I think but, 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 there's some edit paragraphs. Yeah, yeah, I think I think let's have you guys do the edit okay. send it back to us just so yeah. we're we're all sure we got all the edits we want. Yeah, if we're gonna if we're gonna take five minutes on it, we might as well approve it next time. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So basically, then that cover. Well, you can see all our next steps. Yeah. And the only last one: begin informational meetings. We'd really like to do that with you, mm -hmm. not just you know. No, the they should order people. We'd really like to do that in conjunction with you. Right, and then you know. Any of us can show up at yeah. the informational meeting. I mean, we'd love you a couple of you too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make cool. sense? Thank yeah. You. That's. Thank you for waiting. And then Denise, yeah, Denise and John, you, it's great that everybody's here, and it's also great we have Denise and John to bring us little updates as we as we need, need them. Yep. You guys don't have to always be coming out on the, especially when it gets yucky. Yeah. I'm just curious if there's anyone on the team that was part of the Yeah, there is. Uh, there's, did there's, I see Heidi up there? Yeah, there's Heidi. Heidi's up there. There's John Rosenblum. Jamie. There's Jamie. There's uh, Virginia Clammer. There's Bev Heiss. Oh. Um, David Ellenbogen. I don't know. Is he part of? Yeah, he yeah. is. Yeah. He's a camp. Yeah, I know he's there, right? I know he was part of the group. Does anybody from the Zoom people have any comment? Okay. Just a thank you for moving forward. So, I just want to point out we have an enthusiastic group, and so we don't want to get stuck with we, if, the, if we can get the MOU to sign quickly. Like yep. Yeah. 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 Next yeah. meeting. You don't have to come next meeting. Right. Next meeting. <laughs> and Mark will sit over there. Right. And we'll thank, you thank you very much. Thank, sure. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for putting that information together. Yeah. All right. So, Jim, anything else? Cookies were great, but I wouldn't come up to you with this place. Well, they keep you up all night. Too. <laughs> I just want to make sure, Jim, Jim, do you have anything else? I'm good, Denise. Are you good with me? I think so, yeah. Okay. I I'm right, going to leave now. Thank you, for Bye, Thank you for Zooming. We saved you oh, a cookie. Oh, Bye, Have Jen. a great evening, everyone. <laughs> Who's the lead on the ground? Um, really, this is so old. So can I make a motion that we approve the signing of the item at CLG nomination to National Historic Board? Yes, lovely. Thank you. I don't know if Katie heard that. I can't, I can't. No, I can't hear anything. I approve the signing of the Adam CLG nomination to the National Historic Register. Thank you. 
The second was by Rick. Actually, I think it was Mark. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And we all said aye. 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 Okay, so we approved this. I read all the minutes, I think, today. Yep. Okay, good. I'll um, make the motion that we approve the minutes with all the wait. changes. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Sorry. <laughs> so we're signing the CLG. There's only place for my signature. So. Pass it down while I'll sign it. Somebody want to authorize me to sign it? Sure. The motion includes an authorization. Please to sign it. Okay, done. Next. Next up. There's not today's not the today's the 20th. You know what I think, by the way, I think I want to do just, just one item. <clears throat> I'm gonna take this MOU and put everything in it that I thought everybody wanted and all the corrections. Right. And I'm gonna send it to you guys. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But wait, oh, wait, they all have to sign. So what I wanna do is get you guys back like, no, I didn't say that or, right. or whatever. Get us to bless it. Then, so no, just tell me it's okay. Then I will okay. print it off, get all or of them. Them to sign it. Well, do you want to no, sign? No, well, but what you you're want them to sign it first. Okay. No, well, but I think what you're saying is we're going to be more picky. Yeah. yeah. So they've already said they. Yeah. Okay. So I am. Yeah. So you're going to want us to sign first. Are you sign comfortable signing first? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes the most sense. Great. Is that great. We just okay. sign it first. Great. Done. Thank um, you. Fine. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> How was your trip? How was your vacation? Wait a minute, we're still in session. Yeah. No, let's go. Come on. Okay, so yeah, other fine. updates is sure, we should. I, in early meeting. I think we can be. Too late to be early. Sorry, well, I, can, nine, I could nine, use a drink. It's 9 30. It's not almost. And so let's. Do you want to do minutes? We all, yeah. Are we, we want to do a bunch at the same time? I, I move. We approve all the minutes. <laughs> That has not yet yes, revised. And I'm I, I, Sharon and I made comments, and I'm sure right. I'm pretty sure there. that I went through all of them. Right. I did. I went through right. every single okay. one. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please. Aye. 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 Okay. Would anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. <laughs> you can't go anywhere, dear, until you wash your glass so that I don't get I know that. an email saying that somebody left a mess. <laughs> <laughs> You're way more fun than I was going to say. She is way more fun. I know. You look at Cal's reaction. You can say it to a damn selection. Okay, so we are done.